you know what I need? Let's, let's play the happy music. <laughs> so good morning everybody <laughs> yeah whoop whoop <laughs> welcome to forex that today everybody very nice to have you thank you for being here thank you for posting your trade plans let me remind you that trading is risky not appropriate for everyone the past performance good or bad is not necessarily indicative of future results Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Kill the background music. What background music? Does anyone hear background music? No? <laughs> Mickey. <clears throat> Come on, Mickey. Hey! Why don't you kill that background music? It's driving me crazy. <laughs> Come on, Mickey. Uh, yeah, let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of the future. <laughs> so, uh, Brady. Oh, I can't even do that. Yeah. Anyways, Mickey probably hates that, so I, I apologize. I take that back. Never go there. I do these sessions 7.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday, here at Forex.today. My name is Wayne McDonald. I am the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. Thank you very much for being a client to TradersWay. We appreciate you. Throw your diamonds in the sky. The overriding goal of these webinars is to make you success sooner than later. So I will conduct technical and fundamental analysis with the overriding goal of helping you put together trade plans. If I earn your loyalty and respect today, uh, hey, give it a like, give it a subscribe. What does that even mean? Uh, but certainly visit tradersway.com and open up a, a, a trading account, even, even a demo. Just tr try us out. Give us a shot. You aim to please. All right. So let's start with yesterday's boo-boo. <laughs> yesterday, uh, in yesterday's webinar, this was great. I gave uh, I gave like nine reasons why this was a buy, right? <laughs> so, what did I do? I'm like, yeah, this looks really good. We got the monthly pivot. We got the triple touch, quad bottom. We have everything you want here. Buy. So I'm like, so I'll just go and buy it. I, and, it's, and instead, I clicked sell. And didn't even know. I adjusted the stop, right? I, I moved the stop down here and all this kind of stuff, but I did it backwards. I sold it instead of buy it. It's the downside of doing webinars, I guess, right? <laughs> Definitely. Well, oh, luckily it wasn't a fat fit finger, right? Um, but anyways, so I gave nine reasons why this should go up. I think that's what happened. That what's supposed to be happening, right? Yeah. Brady says up. He's up 75 pips on this one. Yeah, and that's about right too, right? So, uh, so anyways, I pulled the trigger. I think that's what matters. Like here, and I said I I wanted to be long. So, <laughs> so. No, so uh, Manny, I didn't even put a limit on it. Um, I, I, I just put a stop, remember, because I wanted to hold it for, for a month. 
so anyways, I come back to the, the charts like after the webinar and stuff, and I, I look and I see 40, right? And I'm like, oh, good, I'm up 40 pips. That's good. I knew it. I'm so smart. I'm the world's greatest trader. I'm invaluable. This is just up. And then I'm like, wait. I look again, and I'm like, wait. And I get my glasses on. <laughs> I'm losing 40 pips. <laughs> I'm like, <coughs> what? <laughs> And I look over, sell? I don't remember selling. I thought I bought it. And I open up, you know, and then I go to the chart. And sure enough, I sold it right where I wanted to buy it. I'm like, oh, my God. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Got out minus 40. So I did everything perfect except I clicked the wrong button. <sighs> Getting old, I know. Kill the background music. <laughs> hey, Mickey. What are all those voices? Yeah. So ho hopefully Mickey got it taken care of. Yeah, I think what happens is some people, their YouTube player gets caught or something. So anyways, we can go over that. So uh, world's greatest trade, and, and I screwed it up. Um, but anyways, the whole point here was that was a buy zone on the monthly. Okay. The idea was uh, buy it at, uh, I don't know, less than 77, and the target is 79, 50, 79. It's not a lot of tips, but maybe it's the, the beginning of something beautiful. So this is our first test of resistance. Next test of, of resistance is a little higher after that. So this is, you know, we're coming up to the sell zone, and you don't want to be buying anymore. Um, one of the things we talked about is it could last not just April, but May and half of June. Yes. Hans, do I have a, no, uh, I don't, Hans, because I kind of lump them in together, this global macroeconomics in general, and then I treat them as commodities, individual, uh, so I don't really trade them against each other. I know if you're probably an Australian or a Kiwi, right? And maybe maybe that's why you care, um, which makes sense to me, right? But uh, I don't tend to trade those. Nothing wrong with it. It's just I don't I don't tend to. If I'm buying Aussie, I'm probably buying Kiwi. If I'm selling Aussie, I'm probably selling Kiwi, and vice versa. I rarely want, you know, let's say, uh, Aussie to be off, ripper strong and, and the, the Kiwi to be ripper, ripper weak. Because the whole point, right, is to be trading the, the strongest against the weakest. Uh, so unless you're an Australian or a Kiwi um, doing business in the other country, uh, there, there's usually something a lot better. Okay, Hans? Yeah, you you probably have concerns in these in these countries, right? Hans, do you, do you like trading them? Either together like that, the Aussie Kiwi, or are you an Aussie person? Or are you a Kiwi person as far as your, your charts, or do you not care, or do you care, or what? Um, John, if it's in a red zone, you should take profit. That's what it is. Now, what? when would you ignore it? Well, if you... If you're in a longer term trade. Okay, okay, Hans. Yeah. So I try not to, <clears throat> I don't look, how about this? Let, let, let's step back. I don't look at charts to find trades. Okay. So I don't do what I think some of you guys are doing where I cycle through a whole bunch of charts and say, this says it should go up, this says it should go down. I don't do that. 
So that premise right off the bat just doesn't doesn't fly with me. I guess that's a little better, right? That just doesn't fly with me. Um, I make the decisions first and foremost on fundamentals. So I'll say things like, oh, global macroeconomics seems to be improving, or like the news, right? Not economic releases. The news yesterday is the she, you know, the the the, the president of China gave a speech yesterday saying he doesn't want to trade war with the United States. And in fact, he's going to open up some markets to the United States, including auto, automobile manufacturers. So the stock markets are around the world are rallying. Commodities should rally as well. And what, what are cars made out of? Are they made out of plastic? You know, what kind of metal? Aluminum, aluminum, sorry. Aluminum and steel. Guess what? Those prices are up today. You know, so that kind of stuff is important. All right, so where do you get aluminum and steel? Yeah, Brooke, most people don't have carbon fiber cars, right? I, I, I like blue. Carbon fiber. Let's see if nobody uses oil. So, you know, but so, anyways, just just think about it, right? Th those are the things that are important. So I don't look at like I don't look at an Aussie Kiwi chart and say, "Wow, look at that bottom." Aussie's supposed to go up. Uh, Aussie doesn't supposed to go up. Uh, Aussie doesn't have to do anything. Okay, nobody cares about a currency. What do they care about? Even monetary policy is a reaction. Profit, okay, Nuno's kind of on the way, sort of, yeah, but even simpler than that, they want to buy something with it. Okay, what is money? Where's my fundamental course, people? Money, right? Medium of exchange, unit of account, and store of value. So money is worthless, pointless, really. It, 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 a unit of account is just how many, how many widgets and gadgets can you buy is what it means, right? So if there's news and it seems like uh, car makers are going to be able to sell more um, cars in China than before, they're going to need things to build them. And they need to go to form markets to buy these things like steel, which is iron ore and coal, or aluminum, right? They're going to have to find suppliers of this material and eventually put it you know, on the Baltic dry index or can ship it somewhere. And then turn the raw material into cars and then ship them those cars to China. So anyways, that's what matters. Okay. Even more than like today's PPI number. Okay, great. PPI is a measure of inflation at the producer level. Um, but the real news was like policy speech yesterday. That's the real news that matters. Okay. The other is economic data, which we use to measure economic conditions and set expectations for the future. So future expectations, right? Or the expect future economic um, conditions, right? Those are the things that kind of drive monetary policy and all that kind of stuff. But a change in policy, like China saying we don't want to trade war. In fact, we're going to open up our markets. Okay, that's going to move the money around. And that, that, that kind of stuff is where I get my trading ideas. Okay. Uh, I think it's very dangerous to open a chart and look for trades because do, you know what? You're going to find tons of them. Right? You're going to find tons and tons of trading opportunities that potentially don't make any sense. Maybe, I mean, some of them will work, but anyway, so let's move on to uh, I'm on DUSD. Let's just kind of tip down around the world. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, let's let's go to this. So how do you remember this? Were we thinking about being long the month of April or being short the month of April on USD or uh, Euro USD? Craig's got the hammock on it. Yeah, we even set up the hammock, didn't we? Oh, okay, Chuck, that's what you're probably talking about, right? Yeah, and in this case, especially since it's Tuesday, uh, you should at least expect, it doesn't mean it'll do it, but you should plan for, uh, actually, it's complete reversal to the central. So if you were long-term long, but short-term here, and you took profit, nothing, nothing wrong with that at all. Because now you can uh, walk away from the risk and set up the next trade. You can always be long later as well. Okay. Yeah, I, but I wouldn't even be quick to the entry either. Okay. Uh, you know, like tomorrow's CPI, isn't it? So maybe, you know, maybe, maybe then. Okay. Cool. Nice little setup. Somebody said, uh, should, should we buy USD CAD? Uh, <laughs> um, oops, okay, that, that's weird. Yeah, these things don't draw well on uh, multi time frames. Okay. Uh, do I look like I want to be long? Doesn't seem like the plan, does it? Oh, I remember what this conversation, right? I remember this conversation now. Um, I have this measured up, not to predict that it was going up, but I'm explaining here why you can predict this coming down. Because this is beyond the 618786. So instead of uh, a higher high, it's predicting a higher low. That's why I have it up here, which predicts the fall off here. Okay. And then I have it rising and then falling. So it's supposed to drop to about, I'd say, 26 and a half to 2626. So if you're thinking long, I wouldn't be the first guy in the trade. Or it would be short term, like very short term. Okay. So I would assume sort of this area here is probably going to be the problem. And that's why I have, you can see I already have that as the target. Okay. Cool, right? Cool beans. Cool. So then that means oil should be going up. Does this look does this look like I, I want to be long or does this look like I want to be short? Uh, it's a I, I, so I'm going to I forget which pivot I put on the swing trading course, but I'll, I'll switch that. 
I'll switch it so it's the uh, so it's the better one. <laughs> Brooks, a huge one. Yeah, I forgot his name. Yeah, Wyatt was a student of mine. Uh, I don't know, a long time ago. And he made the pivots. All right, so yeah, long, right? Cool. Looks like we got lucky. What are the components of this? I think the major component of this is it, it's the monthly swing, right? Remember, the swing trading group meets on Friday. Uh, we have to decide what time. I'm thinking maybe 9 a.m. ET or something. Maybe even noon. Maybe noon. I don't know. Uh, but what I'm saying is this is a monthly swing, and you can see the, the, general, uh, the general plan here. See, we have the up, we have the coming down, 618, roll reversal, but you see this? It's the monthly long on our way to 70. Buy it at 62 and a half on the way to 70. Really? Why is that, Brady? Oh, to those that um, they said uh, their access expired and they wanted to rewatch the videos, uh, I extended that for a whole year now. So, locked out. Uh, you can't watch the last. Locked out. I don't know if that makes sense. You're going to have to email me, Brady. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, well. Cool. But you see, so now we're on our way. So what do we do on these small time frames? Okay. Can you see it? So now you go from strategy to tactics. Well, Manny, how can I guarantee you 45 years of access? I mean, technology will change, really. right? So, no. Right? So when I pay Harvard, they don't say, well, you can come into the classroom whenever you want the rest of your life. Um, no, when the class is over, it's over. So uh, I'm surprised you guys even want a year access. But, you know, hey, I'm just trying to make you happy. So year should be enough. Um, price action, guys. Once you get the strategy done, so you're, you want to be long, so you're, a, you're bull on WTI. Why? Your, your macroeconomic outlook is favorable. You believe macroeconomic conditions are improved. Okay? Great. Then what? You're going, to, you're going to take it off the bottom pivot and take it up to the pivot profit zone. Okay, that's the strategy. Now it's tactics, right? Now you drop into the smaller time frame and you use like moving averages, you use oscillators, you use Elliott Wave, you use CCI, ADX, blah, 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 whatever you want. Just pure price action if you want, whatever you want. But see how 90% of it's done already? You have a macroeconomic outlook 
and a longer term setup. In this case, I'm using monthly pivots. So now I drop into a 15 minute chart and everything should be easy at this point. Why? I'm buying dips. I'm, I'm, right? I'm buying off the moving averages. I'm buying oscillator crossovers. I don't have an oscillator here, but I could easily have an oscillator. Okay. But you see, like, this is the textbook stuff. This is, you know, at the 2004, 2003 Forex Trading Expo. 2004. I think I, my presentation was at the 2004 Forex Trading Expo. And my presentation was buying off these moving averages, right? It's amazing, right? That's still the same. And that's just, that's where the technical analysis comes in, really. I mean, sure, you need to know the pivots and some basic technical analysis for um, the longer term chart, but that's not where you kind of make your money per se, is it? It's the smaller time chart. What I see from amateurs is they're all one or all the other, right? They're all 15 minute chart or, or like the, the other example where I thought maybe Hans was going through his charts. He's like, oh, look at Aussie QE. It's supposed to go up. Uh, and that's, I, I don't like that way of using technical analysis, right? So in this case, we're you, now we're pure tactics. But where there's a strategy behind the tactics, right? We're not just kicking down doors and shooting people. We're kicking down the doors and shooting bad <laughs> Bad people are shooting the enemy, right? They're shooting the bad guys. Don't shoot civilians. Don't shoot your your fellow soldiers on your side, right? No friendly fire. Okay. Now, how many people are actively practicing doing things like just using the 21 EMA as support? You're actively practicing. Practicing that? That's a really good one. Yeah. On the four hour? Yeah, okay, on the four hour. Um that that's more of the strategy side. Okay, so like now there is no four hour, right? It it's just it's not it's kissing and it's gotta come back. Um see what I want you to do is say bull and then now you're like, buy dips. That's all I want from you, right? You look at this and you say, I'm a bull. Then you drop into a 515 and say, I want to buy dips. I want to buy cycles. I want to buy retracements. Um, however you do it. Okay? And so my the classic, you know, 2004 presentation said, uh, wait for the 5A cross, right? And buy pullbacks to the 21. Up, 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 right? That's the classic. I believe there's a training course on YouTube from back then. Um, have you guys seen that one? Uh, it was um, like leading and lagging indicators or. Um, Oh, I know what it was called. Uh, the how to the, the timing of your trades or something like that on YouTube from like a thousand years ago. Yeah, that's good. I mean, it's basic, but it's good. And just cover some basic things like that. Then the oscillators and yeah. Oh, yeah, that was the first time they learned. Yeah, that's cool, right? I mean, it's helpful. Uh, so Aussie, we did uh, Euro, we kind of covered Peso. I'm not interested in crude, refined gold. I guess we got to do gold. All right. Does that look like I'm bullish or bearish to you? Cool. So let me ask a, a, a you know sort of an essence question. 
Um, are, are these daily webinars helping? So we try to cover this. Yeah, extremely, yeah. The funding, okay, lots of things. Thank you, guys. That, by the way, that means every one of you has an account at Trader's Way, right? I mean, how horrible would it be for you to say, yeah, these are incredibly important to me, Wayne, but I'm not going to open an account with you guys. <laughs> like, boy, like your mom would be embarrassed, right? <laughs> well, it's a start. Yeah. yeah. All right on, guys. <laughs> cool. Um, it's funny how it's still hard, though, right? It's still difficult. Holy Grail, super awesome. Thank you, guys. Anyone? Okay. Let them know that, uh, you know, I don't know how, but if you talk to someone, say, hey, man, I really like these webinars. Uh, anyways, um, isn't it interesting? I hope you don't mind if I go psyche here, um, or psych, um, trader psychology. Uh, isn't it interesting how it's still difficult? I mean, like, seriously, right? If you were, like, sitting back, you're like, why is it still difficult? Brooke, well, Brooke, talk to support. But, yeah. but I appreciate, you know, you throwing in the effort. Remember, the amount... Uh, I think it's tough to be a, a, a broker, it's just in finance in general. If you know anybody anywhere in the world that works in finance, you know it's a nightmare. Nobody anywhere on the planet is happy if you work in finance. Everything's a problem. Anyways. Um, isn't it interesting that it's still difficult? Like, we knew our, our plan at the end of the year was to be long all the end pairs. Oh, uh, Katie, in your fundamental class, you were buying dollars until the in interest were going up for your Intel class. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Katie, the difference is the um, US dollar is a reserve currency. So in many cases, you might see um, uh, other currencies would tend to go up. Or let's say when you're in a classroom you, and they say interest rate, higher interest rates attract um, um, attract money and therefore drive up the, the value of the currency. There's this idea of the short term and the long run. There's also this idea of relative compared to what. There's also this idea of velocity, how fast is the interest rate rising versus how fast the other ones. So when I talk about the dollar, the dollar is unique. I talk about the dollar getting strong when the interest rate was falling. Isn't that strange? The, do the, the, the interest rate was falling. But how do you get the interest rate to fall? No. no. Somebody's buying bonds. Thank you, Shaw. Somebody's buying bonds. And if those bonds, if a lot of those buyers of bonds, in this case, it's not really bonds, it's treasuries. But it could be corporate bonds, but it's government treasuries, which is a bond for the government, right? If foreigners are the purchasers of these treasuries, they need the local currency first, so they buy the dollar so that they can buy the treasury. And they do that because they don't trust their own government and they don't trust their own bank, especially in economies that have free floating rates, right? Because their rates may be way different. So anyways, 
imagine because the United States is a reserve currency, when things were really, really bad, right? The economy was really, 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 really bad. The US dollar was very, 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 very strong. Okay, Katie, see that? The reason was foreigners were buying US dollars to buy US treasury because things were bad, not just here, everywhere. That's global macroeconomics, right? So I said I wanted to keep buying dollars until the Fed announced that there was the end of quantitative easing or even just the tapering of quantitative easing. Because that means things are better. Things are not as bad as they used to be. So what's the consequence of that? If things are not as bad as they used to be, and if things are expected to get better, those same buyers of treasuries say, oh, well, I don't need these treasuries anymore. I can bring my money home. So they sell the treasury, sell the dollar, and do business overseas. So now that things are improving around the world, Katie, I'm a seller of the dollar because things are good. I'm a seller of the dollar because the U.S. economy is good and the global economy is good. So, as a for, uh, uh, you know, as a, someone in an economy that's doing well, I can then buy relatively cheaper products from foreigners. I can buy products from China, for example. So what, what happens when I buy a product from China? What is, where does my money go? So I'm happy, I'm confident, I want to buy a very, very expensive television because I'm so confident. Right? I'm actually doing this, in fact. I won't, it's not a TV, I'm buying a movie projector that uses lasers and not light bulbs. So I'm, I'm buying a laser movie projector um, for a 150-inch screen, um, which is super awesome. I don't want to buy the, the $40 million one. I want to buy the Chinese one. <laughs> true story. I'm, true story. I'm like, I don't want to spend that kind of money. So I'm buying one from China. Where does my money go? I'm, I'm spending thousands of dollars buying this projector well if and i'm literally shipping it in from china <laughs> like literally it's not even from the u.s store uh, i'm not talking walmart stuff right so here's the interesting thing that means my dollar is now going into the foreign exchange market and being converted into some other currency so that means i'm i'm a seller of my dollar right and now that dollar is in the, the market, in the interbanking system out there, and there's more dollars, right? So now that things are good, and, and our economy is happy, and I'm confident in the future, and I'm making this purchase, my dollar is weakening. It's strange, right? So when things are bad, the dollar is strong. When things are good, the dollar is weak. It's all reversed. Now, it, would this be would this be true in other situations? Um, not as much. Probably not. I mean, you can generally say no, but I was thinking like, well, like how about Canada? Or how about Australia? When, when the global economy is bad. What happens to the Australian dollar? They weaken. Uh, it, when interest rates fell in Australia, did the currency go up or down? Down. So macroeconomics slowed global growth, slowed demand for commodities. Right? And then commodity exporters had less demand, which means there was less demand for their local currency. Right? Which means their GDP slowed. 
which means their central bank cut interest rates and or increased money supply, which further weakens the economy, which eventually, this is the difference between Y and Y bar, if you're an economist, eventually the lower interest rate and the, and the lower cost of the currency to a foreigner, right, eventually should drive demand and then bring Y closer to Y bar, which is uh, p potential uh, real GDP towards potential GDP, okay? And it swings back. And so there's this, in economics, there's the measure of the short term, and then there's the measure of the long term, and then somehow they, they, they collide, right? Ideally, they collide. And so that, that seems to be more traditional, right, Katie? That's what you would think in the basic model, right? The problem is when you hear this from a, a professor at a university, they don't explain it that way, do they? <laughs> right, but yeah. Yeah, there you go, Shaw. The only problem is I'm struggling through my economics class. <laughs> my macroeconomics class, I'm struggling through it. <laughs> Stupid Harvard. Oh, you ready? Uh-oh, here it comes. Uh-oh, here it comes. Avert your eyes, everybody. <laughs> Wicked smart. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, keep it clean, keep it clean. <laughs> keep it clean, folks, keep it clean. <laughs> all right, ladies, all right, ladies, settle down. All right, all right, so there, anyways, uh, the other part of our conversation is, isn't it interesting how difficult this still is, even if you have a long-term plan? So how could you possibly be successful without a long-term plan? And by long-term plan, I mean bias. I don't think you really can on the long run. Maybe you can for a while. Maybe you have a good week or a good month. Maybe you even have a good year. But do you believe you can be a professional foreign exchange trader without like a thoughtful bias in place? How do you know what's good? How do you know what's bad? How do you know what's mediocre? I mean, I, I don't know how to make basic decisions like that. And it seems to me your consistency would be horrible. Right? So I really hope we can get you to the point. And that, that, was, that, that was one of the biggest benefits of the fund. Uh, if, you, if you're going to learn how to be a, a portfolio manager, the whole thing was you get that taken care of so you can be a consistent and confident trader and not flipping all over the place, right? <clears throat> All right, so anyways, uh, yeah, I don't think I need to go into it more. I was going to go into that more, but then I think we're losing time. So um, let's go to these yen pairs. Okay. Okay. How am I doing so far? <clears throat> Yeah. On the way? <clears throat> Again, six months in advance, right? I think that's fair to say that. 
Cool. Okay. How's this one? <laughs> la, 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 la. Seems to be a good start. Swinging and scalping and having a lot of fun. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Look at it. I had to draw two lines. But once again, this is just the simple buy. Does it matter to you the bottom of this currency was on the 2nd of April? This one might have been the third or second. <clears throat> I mean, come on. Or is it starting to click now, guys? Okay. Is it starting to click? Again, we were heavily short this whole period. Having talked about it months in advance. And then as it's falling, we're saying, hey, man, this is going to flip at eight in April. And here we are long now in April, and it's, and it's rallying up, hitting monthly targets. Cool. I'm really glad then. That's that, right? Good. Okay. <clears throat> now, there was also a chemical attack in Syria, what, a week ago? This is affecting the Turkish lira. It sort of represents uh, mm. the... I don't know, economic conditions of the region, let's say, or risk on, risk off kind of thing for the area. You know, some sort of barometer. And uh, it's not good, is it? <clears throat> Remember, there was a time when we were buying this, uh, or sorry, selling this pair and doing very, very well. Right, you guys remember that for about maybe a month or something or several weeks, I cornered the market on Turkish lira and did very very well, and then all of a sudden I stopped trading it, and it right, and this thing just completely. Uh, was it this red candle? No, that's only one day. I can't remember. Oh, it was this. So I sold the heck out of this, and then I stopped trading it altogether, and then right, right. It was in here somewhere, actually. I can't. Yeah, it must have been this. Was that December? No. Was it? No, it wasn't way left. Because that's last year. Couldn't have been last year. Anyways. Was it? Wow. See, uh, anyways, I can't remember. Uh, so anyways, guys, uh, that's how I kind of want you to look at the Lira. So if you notice that maybe, let's say, the Russians and the Americans get together and divvy up Syria amongst themselves, then um, once they get closer to some sort of peace and stability, it doesn't matter if the Russians win or the Americans win, um, just peace and stability. As long as things can't get worse, then things can possibly get better. And I think you'll see the Turkish lira uh, benefit from that greatly. Okay. I don't know if that's an opportunity for you. I don't, I don't know if you're <clears throat> really interested in Turkish lira and stuff. 
but it is a, a, a currency play. Uh, another thing that's happening right now is the Russian ruble is collapsing again. So I don't know if you have access to the Russian ruble. If that's something that you want to trade or something. And here we are, middle of the month for um, peso, and it's just the wrong time of the month for trading this. So uh, I'm not even interested in looking. But isn't that part of? Uh, let's see. Uh, isn't that the part that's interesting? I don't like this at all. Um, I think that's the interesting part. Um, and, th and that's where the bias comes from, or having a strategy or something. Um, I don't even want to know if it doesn't fit my plan. So I don't want to know if this is you know, like 100% likely it's going to fall. I don't want to know because it's the wrong, wrong time of the month. In that case, I have a set plan, a set strategy. I look, I look for what I need and then I ignore the rest. Chuck says this is going to top out at uh, 4.21. So to me, again, uh, a Turkish lira, going back to that maybe, um, it's not technical to me. So I don't know. You're saying, wow, you're you're really picking up there. Seven or 4.2, 4.21, way up there. I don't even know how you come up with that number. Uh, are you saying... This R R three. See, to me, I would look at M five um, R monthly R two. But then you're putting technical analysis on this. Oh, one three two. So see, I just I don't think that matters, Chuck. Right? No disrespect or anything, but um, I wouldn't apply technical analysis to a market that's moving. Um, and I think it's moving because of things like um, geopolitical risk, right? There, there was an, a chemical attack. There's like 40 dead bodies from a chemical attack. And Israel's crying foul to the whole world saying, look, this is a chemical warfare. This is against... Um, I mean, we have institutions in place from World War One and World War Two that's supposed to prevent these situations, and the institutions are failing because it, and everyone's ignoring this. You can't just drop chemicals onto a town. Um, it, it's supposed to be wrong. So, anyways, this is what's happening. And it, it, it doesn't seem like there's going to be a quick resolution. And that just means the whole area um, is economically unstable. And I think that's what we're seeing. Here. Okay. So 1382, yeah, okay. But, you know, I don't know. I'd be cautious. I'd be super river cautious. I'd say whatever's driving this is not on this chart. Plus, look at this. Why would you short that? <laughs> right? <laughs> Why would you short that? And you know, Euro's got to be. Uh, and if I guess if you're going this long term, I would actually look at um, at uh, Euro uh, Lira. I think that would be the better one. Okay. And this is, to me, this represents European investors pulling their money out of uh, the whole region. And um, I don't know if the shekel is on here. Do we have shekel? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't look. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I doubt it. Um, shekel is probably in the same situation, right? Right, Shaw's like, yeah, it's definitely hot money. And very often, like, illegal money from Iran trying to make its way to Dubai usually gets filtered through Turkey and stuff like that, too. It's amazing how many uh, deals you have to kind of 
Uh, I remember um, years ago, I used to go to Dubai a lot uh, to try to raise money for a fund. And there were multiple people that said, Wayne, we love everything that you're doing. We love all your analysis. This is great. We want to give you millions of dollars. I'm like, cool. And they're like, well, but it's going to go through this bank and then that bank and then this other bank and then this bank and then through this company and through that company. And then, uh, and then it's going to come to you as a third party wire. And I'm like, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't. Like, it was amazing how normal that was in Dubai. Yeah, yeah, there's going to be a plane. <laughs> A plane is going to arrive at 9.22 p.m., be out on the runway. Yeah. Uh, Dubai is a funny place. Um, so, you know, I ended up saying no to everybody because that's the problem, right? Um, so, anyways, Turkey very often can do that filter. Yeah, I've heard of places, though, where planes land and people offload money. <laughs> so anyways, uh, Turkish land and all that. So I don't know if that's helpful to you. I don't know if you're into the exotic trades and stuff like that. I, I, you're probably not thinking all that, which is fine. So we go back to these. If global conditions, now we're moving from that region now to here. If global conditions are favorable, Typically, your short dollar, short yen, uh, long commodities, that kind of thing. And that, that's my simple analysis. And then you can see in reverse, when you go into a micro economy, those currencies are going to be punished because the business conditions are not good there. So when I see euro uh, lira going up, what I see is Europe going, oh, we don't want to be exposed to that risk, right? And they pull their money out of Turkey. Okay, you get that? Now you could be making money on that though, right? The cause and effect. That's the kind of the point I'm getting to. Whether it's that or anything else, there's always cause and effect. What's the consequence of things? Um, so I find so many people get so caught up in the short term charts, they wanna skip, scalp, scalp, uh, which is fine. Um, or they get so caught up in a news event like non-farm payrolls and it goes blip, 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 blip. But to me, it's these bigger things that are seem to be supremely more important, right? Where we can talk about the ebb and flow, the seasonality, the central banking policies, and um, all that kind of stuff. It seems to be just supremely more important on, on the longer run. So set your biases and then use your technical analysis after the fact, after you set your direction, then it should be easy or easier, should I say, um, buying dips. If you've said to yourself, I should be buying dips for the, for the rest of the week. Or now that I see the double bottom, I should be buying dips for the rest of the week, maybe the rest of the month. How many people are getting closer to making those types of decisions in your planning process? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important. How about for those that didn't say yes? What are you going to do to change the behavior? Now that's the kind of question that will make you a better trader. Not trading more. Okay. George is not there yet. Thank you for being open and honest. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Manny, not there, not right there. Carol, getting there. Mr. B, slowly. Yeah. It's that question. If I were me, if I were you, if I were me, I would actually write that down. 
what am I doing now to make that change? Can you imagine if that's sitting right here above my laptop and I, and I can look at it and say, what am I doing now to, to, I don't know how you want to phrase it, apply my trade? This is the point of Forex dot today. Every day you should document, I am a bull on this pair. This is the chart I'm looking at, and I'm looking to buy dips today. That must take you less than five minutes, right? You don't have to have 17 charts. I don't need four paragraphs. It's, to me, it would be like a personal commitment to myself. It'd be like a contract. Today, I am a bull on this pair. This is the chart I'm looking at. And my plan today or this week is to buy dips because I'm a bull. Five minutes maybe, right? But doing it, I think, will make you a better trade. Okay. All right, cool, Brady. FX boot camp is working now. Okay, cool. Okay. So will you do it? I think you believe what I'm saying is true. I think you believe when I say that making a commitment documenting it takes less than five minutes that the documentation of it will make you a better trader because it helps you stick to it i think you believe it it would be helpful and it's easy to do and yet most people won't do it but is it that same thing the, that most people don't do it is that the same reason most people are not successful and I venture to propose that probably it's that it's that it's that last piece, isn't it? That last little discipline. You know it will make you a better trader. You will know it'll help you reach your personal goals, whether it's your yellow Lamborghini, your your Rolex. Look, I don't even have a watch. I don't have a car. I'm not a I'm not a loser. They're just not important to me. So whatever is important to you is attainable, reachable. You know it's there, right? And it's it, doing these things will help you reach those personal goals. And it, it takes a little bit of effort, five minutes a day, and it'll probably lead to your success. Yeah, but I got to go, right? Ah, yeah, so, uh, and nothing happens. But it might be that's the thing, isn't it? Like, isn't that that thing that might be separating you or maybe separates everybody? Carol says, I still have trouble finding bias. That's where I would put coin. So in the portfolio manager um, uh, team that we're building, I take care of that for you. That's the whole point. So now you don't even have to worry about it. Don't worry about it in that case, right? Just don't worry about it. You're only going to sell USD CAD, and that's that. So whatever you need to do to do that for yourself is what you need to do for yourself. So I would do something like Canadian dollar, and I'd flip a coin. Heads or tails? Bull or bear? Bear. That's it. You've made your decision, Carol. Do you know how long you're a bear on the Canadian dollar? Forever.
So now here's the upside, Carol. Every day you log into Forex Start Today. You take a screenshot of your USD CAD or CAD Yen or CAD Swissy, whatever you trade, pound CAD if that's what you want. But you know you're a bear on CAD. Okay, that's it. That's you just know that. So every day you say, I am a bear on the Canadian dollar. So today I see CAD Swissy is the best, right? Kiwi CAD is the best, you know, because now you, all you're doing is looking for the strongest currency to trade against the CAD. You're like, all right, so all right, today I'm doing this. So I will be uh, buying dips or selling rallies or blah, 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 and here's the chart I've picked. But getting there is the most important thing, Carol, just deciding that you're a bear on CAD. Because now you know you're not buying CAD. Now you know you're only selling CAD. And now you just have to find what happens to be strong today. Right, Carol? What's strong today? CAD? No, you're a bear. Can't be. All right, so what is strong? Well, you know, Aussie might be strong. Euro might be strong. Pound might be strong. Kiwi might be strong. You look at this like, all right, well, Euro looks pretty strong, so I wonder what the Euro CAD is going to be like today, right? So this is Carol in the morning. Carol knows that she's a bear on CAD. So she looks around. Euro's doing really well. I wonder what Euro CAD's going to look like. And so you go and you got to find your Euro CAD, uh, Euro CAD, and you look at this. And, oh, okay, uh, Euro CAD. My trade plan today, this is Carol's voice, by the way. <laughs> My trade plan for the day. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Forex.today people. My name is Carol, and I am a bear on the Canadian dollar. So today I'm paying close attention to the monthly pivots forming a double bottom. And if over the course of the next week or so, you know, blah, 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 I might look for something like that. Okay? And that's all you're doing. Right? That's what you're hoping for. And you're, you're, that's, that's it. You just made your post. Like, oh my gosh, you, I, oh. That's what's holding you guys back. That, that's it. Hmm. So I wish you success. Okay. I wish you success. Um, you have to earn your success. Yeah, Carol's like a lot. See, you're like scanning a, a, a gazillion charts, but like uh, Han said at the beginning, right? All of a sudden, you might look at something and say, "Well, this says it has to go up." No, 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 no. This doesn't say anything. But you know, you're a bear, right, Carol? On the CAD, so you can only be long this chart. So, what would make you want to be long this chart, Carol? Is this an uptrend? What do you think, guys? Is this an uptrend? You're only allowed to buy it. Is this an uptrend? No. So then how, what permission, what would you need to see to buy this? A double bottom would be a start. A higher high, higher low would be a second start. Like, you see, how much clarity it brings to your training? No brute five A crosses and all that. No, no, no. There's only two things. First of all, you have to have a bottom. A bottom could be a double bottom. It could be a triple bottom. It could be a quad bottom. Kind of changes the outlook, but you still have to have a bottom. If this makes a lower low, you just walk away. Okay, but that's that. So you have to have a bottom. What's the next thing? Well, 
if it made a higher high? Do you buy it now up here? Is that where you buy it? No. So what do you do in this scenario? Well, ideally there's something better than wait. Yeah, look left. A roll reversal, maybe somewhere in this area. Oops. What else do you do? Fibonacci is the next thing I would I would add to that. So we'll call this uh, where's my mouse? Uh, Fifty percent. So this is three eight two. This is six one eight. So you would want to see something like this, right? So you're either long here off the double bottom or you're long here off the 382. And you're expecting this. Doesn't mean you'll get it, but that's what you're, you're expecting, right? That's what's holding you back from success. I'd be so like a, like a dog with a bone. I'd be so latched on that I couldn't let go if I wanted to. That's my success right there, right? That is simply if you're a bull. What if you happen to be a bear on the euro? and a bull on the CAD. Then you're selling rallies, right? And you're just doing the opposite. And you're like, you actually want to sell that this area here. Right? And now you see why you get pullbacks. But you know what's happening? What you should be realizing is that professionals are actually doing this. They're deciding on uh, what terms would they be buying a falling market and they're like, hmm, I'm not comfortable buying a falling market. So I'm going to need some sort of reversal pattern. That makes sense, right? And someone else is like, if this comes up this high, I'm going to sell it because it's a downtrend. So professional traders are selling in a falling market or looking for reversal patterns in that same market if they're a bull. What you're doing is different from what professionals are doing. And you may find on the long run it won't work as well. So I propose we get you to trade like a professional. Okay. I hope you have five minutes a day. I, I hope you have five minutes a day you're willing to invest into your own successful future. Okay? Are there too many advertisements on Forex.today where you're like, Wayne, I'm trying to post my trade plan, but I'm, there's so many banner ads all over the place. I can't see. Wait, there are none. There's none. Oh, my gosh. So this is simply a tool in a small community of other focused traders like yourself. I hope you have five minutes a day to invest into your own success by simply saying, I'm a, I'm a bear on the Canadian dollar. I see a double bottom forming. If it reverses, I might be interested in buying it. That's my personal commitment to myself. I hope you're willing to do that. Right? And I'll continue doing an hour and a half webinar with you every day. I hope you have five minutes. So I invest into you an hour and a half every day. I hope you have five minutes to invest in yourself. Okay? Peace on earth. 
May the pips be with you. May our prophets be above average.